Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> sometimes all right what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the mindless for podcast today we have a very special guest uh he was a, a very uh last minute addition to the summer of guests but we're happy to have him on his name is tyrone pooley and he is a power lifter and uh now i'm very interested in this because um you see a lot of of course uh you see a lot of these horror movies today and you see a lot of the villains usually are big dudes and stuff like that um so I'm curious, to, I'm, I want to break down of uh, what your experience is as a power lifter, and uh, we're going to play a little game later on of how, if he could take on some of the uh, most well-known horror icons out there. So, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, let's start off with a little Q&A, just to kind of introduce uh, who you are, what you do, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, but go ahead. And um, my name is Tyrone Pooley, like you said. Uh, I am a power lifter. I work out at uh, in the city of Long Beach. Um, Iron Addicts is the name of the gym. Um, I've been powerlifting only, honestly, for only about a year and a half. Wow. So I actually was just um, regular lifting, like just in the backyard and stuff like that. And I just got introduced to the gym to a couple of people. And I actually, actually, it's funny because I actually hated like deadlifting. Like really? I couldn't stand it. I actually hated deadlifting. And then for it to be like my best lift and to actually like be able to like uh, hold records and and all these different things and move around it's pretty dope actually so, so uh you, you mentioned that you you hated deadlifting how, how did you like become involved with it more like did, did, was it something that you just were like i, I want to take this on more i want to challenge myself or? um actually it's basically it was really the circle that i keep around me like um they seen that they seen the you know the possible strength that i had in that particular lift and thought you know since i do have you know that type of strength i should try deadlifting because it's all about pulling and i always been um i always always had a strong pull so to be able so then when they told me to go ahead and try it i was able to lift 500 off the ground without even trying without any, anybody oh, wow. teaching me so then once you i brought in the the technique the coaching and just a totally different mindset then it obviously just uh, went up from there so yeah so you had mentioned that you were just lifting normally, backyard, casual gym, maybe. Yeah. Uh, what what makes someone actually become like a power lifter? Um, anybody can technically be a power lifter. Like anybody can be like a basketball player, football player, anything like that. It's just how dedicated you are to doing so, because it's a, it's a lot of uh, it's a, it's more of a mental thing when you're on stage and you know it's just you, it's the weight, and it's your competitors, and it's just everybody. You know looking at you and um so i mean basically anybody can be a power lifter i mean it's just how dedicated and that you're going to be to go far in powerlifting, to be known to to hit numbers and to for people to look at you and be like yeah i know exactly who that is definitely so. yeah because um i know like a lot of people in this day and age now uh getting in shape and fitness it's 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 one of it's like a trend now it's like yeah. a lot of people are doing it yeah, absolutely. and um i've seen it around um well, actually, our coworker and our photographer, um, Robert, he's actually, uh, you know, he's he's getting into a diet where he's starting to try to eat healthy, and he's going to the gym and stuff like that. And I've seen him lift and stuff, and he, he he's getting there, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's working man. it out, and he's trying to – he pushes himself every time he goes yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, are you uh, – so you mentioned – so you have a competition coming up. Yes. Um, do you want to explain a little bit about where it's going to be, where it's at, and uh, what you'll be doing? Okay. Uh, this competition is going to be in Vegas. Okay. It's going to be September 21st. Um, uh, so basically, each, each competition, I've done about three now. So each competition, um, you always want to open up, like, with something different, obviously. My first competition, I opened up with, like, 573. And then my second one, I opened up with 600. And then my third one, I opened up with, like, 611. So this competition, I'm planning to open up, like, 636, hopefully. And then we'll go to 661, and then we'll go to... 683 if not 700 so and then uh, and then uh, and then you know it keep going on each competition just try to go higher as higher as possible definitely definitely are um by any chance are you a, a champion i am awesome yeah uh, how did that come about 
basically, um, once you become like a state record holder or anything of that nature, um, at that point you're basically like a champion. So I mean, like you'll be basically. Um, right now I'm number eight in the country. Oh, wow. So wow. yeah, I'm number eight in the country. So I'm trying to obviously be number one. Go to the top. You know, I know some of those guys that are at, you know, number two and number one. I know those guys, and we talk, and we, you know. But uh, it's all friendly competitiveness. So, yeah. So, I mean, all three competitions I've won. Uh, my fourth one, September 21st, I hope and pray I win. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we will. I appreciate it. Yeah, so it should be fun. You know, I always have fun when I'm in there. So Yeah, so you are a pretty big guy here. So uh, how tall are you, and... And like, what's your weight? Um, I'm six four, about six four, and I'm only like two nineteen, nice. two nineteen right now. A lean two nineteen. A, a lean two nineteen, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, it, it sounds like uh, you've been on, like you sound like you said you've been doing this for about a year and a half now. Yeah, a year and a half powerlifting, yeah. And you've been involved in three competitions. That's impressive. You're going on your fourth one to hopefully um, build up to your uh, uh, your what is it? Uh, reputation, reputation, yeah, yeah. reputation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you you want to of course hit a new record, something that you've never done before. Um, what it, what is it like mentally preparing for something like this? Um, uh, normally when I go to like competitions, I I have my whole team with me for the most part. My team is with uh, with me. It's about eight of us, nine of us. Uh, we normally all support each other. So when I'm not mentally there, like I have my coach getting me mentally there because it is hard to get mentally there when you're by yourself and you're trying to get things going. Unfortunately, I believe this competition, that will be that. I'll be by myself this one. So I have to, you know, just do what I'm taught and do what I'm trained to do and just and just, just, just let my strength take over. <laughs> nice. I mean, I, since you did mention you are number eight in the country, yeah. and that's pretty high up there yeah. considering we're a pretty large country. I, that. I imagine you got some sponsors. So. Uh, who who do you, who are you sponsored by? Um, you can make sense. I'm sponsored by Iron Addicts. Iron Addicts is um, CT Fletcher Iron. He's the you know the the owner of it. Um, I have a, a water sponsor, Trucy, as well. They're my water sponsor. Um, I'm actually working with another sponsor uh, called Round Two Nutrition as well, uh, with some supplements that they have. So as of right now, that's kind of basically what I'm at right now with sponsors. Sweet. I mean, that's that's uh, that's always it always comes in handy too with stuff like that, especially when you're going into the world of um, competitive powerlifting right. and stuff like that. Like that, I think that comes in it comes in handy and stuff like that. Um, so you mentioned, of course, uh, your coach and stuff like that, and your team. You want to introduce them a little bit, and so we kind of get an insight of who they are. You said they kind of help you motivate you and stuff yeah, like that. Uh, um, obviously, uh, pops will be called Pop CT Pleasure. That's him. Um, Samson Fletcher, the son. Uh, he actually is the one who seen the strength that I did have when I first worked out with him, and he was the one who actually told me to go ahead and, and try it, and I did it. Uh, good thing I listened. Um, we got um, Tank. We got Herc. We got Big Rob, the coach. We got Joey. Uh, we got Stone, Mike B. Yeah, I want to say that for the most part. That's All right, who that's are, who our, main, yeah, our main group, our main guy. That's the main squad right there. Um, and what what is the what is the record? So are you the record holder? You said I'm the record holder for the state of California right now. Yes, at yeah. 220. And what about uh, nationwide? What's that record? The nation record, I believe the na the national record is um, 744. 744 is the national record, and the world record is like about 800. I want to say. Yeah. So I mean, it's gonna take some time to get there. Definitely. But, you know, I get there. Yeah. Um. So. You're, you know, I mean, I, I know with someone, uh, you know, as big as you, the meal plan's got to be insane. How, how, how is it with meal-wise, just, you know, staying with your protein, with your diets and stuff like that? Like, well, tell us a little bit about uh, how you how you stay fit as far as with your diets and everything. Um, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm eating about, about five times a day. Wow. So it's, you know, it's morning, and I'm snacking in between. Sometimes I get four meals, sometimes I get five. Um, some days I'm working out two to three times out of the, out of the day. Like today will probably be three times out of the day, and then and I, I'm only upping it just because the competition is so close. So I want to go in there as strong as possible. Normally off season when I'm more you know kicking back a little bit more, it just be the one yeah. day a lot more rest. But right now I'm just full throttle, so I, I gotta I gotta get it going. Yeah. I can't yeah. I gotta get it going. So 
do you have like a calorie intake and like how much like you actually how many calories do you burn a day? Burn a day? I, technically, no, not not really. I'm just uh, normally uh, power lift, bodybuilding, and po bodybuilding. I would I would have to take count of my calories and all that because you know it's more your physique, how you look. Um, in our competitions, they don't really care how we look. They just care how st they you know it's about strength. Mm -hmm. So I still train like a bodybuilder, and I also you know train like a power lifter. But when it comes to like counting my like macros and and all that and all that, no. I, um, I just eat with it. I eat clean for the most part, you know, definitely, vegetables definitely. and, yeah. you know, ground turkey. And yeah, turkey the normal protein. The normal protein yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. I do take, I do look at the calories and see. And also, I don't really drink soda and juices. It's all water. Water. All water. Yeah. That's all it is. Um, so, you, you like like you said, you go to the gym, right, especially during competition, two to three times a day. When you're in the offseason, it's more once a day at least. What is your usual routine when you hit the gym? Like, if you do, if you do like, now two two or three times a day, do you do you focus on certain areas? Do you do legs or do you do both? That, like, is there one session at the gym where you'll just focus on one thing and the next session you'll focus on the other half that you didn't get to? What's your normal routine at the gym? So, uh... Um, normally, my normal routine is uh, we're pretty set with our coach. Sometimes we switch it up. So Mondays is normally as our like our chest day, and then yeah. so if I hit chest during the day, later on at night, I might just go hit like arm, uh, shoulders or something like that. I just yeah. keep all the keep everything upper body, and then Tuesday like tomorrow will be leg day, heavy leg day, and then uh, I hit even hit legs again, just to double up on legs. Yeah, and I might like throw like some arms in there just to do it, just for fun, yeah. just just to keep going. Uh, Wednesday will be more of like, um, and that's funny because sometimes Wednesday I take off, sometimes I don't. As of right now, I'm just going six day, uh, five days, five to six days straight. Yeah. And Mondays and Tuesdays are normally the days I'm going like two or three times out of the out of the day. Yeah. Um, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, Fridays and Saturdays are just once. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I might even double up on the the muscle group, just to just do it for fun. Yeah. So. We're gonna move a little bit away from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're Let's gonna move it. a little bit into a little bit of horror here. Let's do it. Uh, so, do you have like an all-time favorite horror movie? Uh, the movie It actually. You like the the movie It? I like it. So, did you have you seen the the original prior to watching the new? I one? have. I've seen the original one, the new one, and then obviously the new one that's coming out. Yeah. So, uh, Pennywise, that that guy's. Pennywise is a little weird. That guy's creepy, it's right? A, it's the eye thing. It's the eye that's killing. Oh, Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. yeah so for him, he he can do that naturally, right? Yeah. The the, the eyes can move it. To be able to yeah. do that naturally is crazy. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I don't think I would. I don't know what I would do if I face him. Right. That guy can just mentally get you uh, with fears and stuff. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Um, have you so uh, on the channel we like to cover um, one of our focuses of covering is uh, the, the local SoCal haunts like okay. Halloween Horror Nights, okay. Not Scary Farm. Have you been to any of those? I've been to Not Scary Farm once. I think I've been to the Queen Mary once. Um, the remembering of that, not too much. I just remember somebody jumping out and almost got punched. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing I can remember about that. Uh, but that's yeah, that was that was probably the last one. It was some time ago, but I can remember that. Uh, out of the two that you've been to, do you remember having a favorite out of the two, or not really? No, I can't tell you if I had a favorite. I just knew that somebody was gonna pop out, <laughs> and I didn't know when or where. I just knew to be aware. So that's all I know. That's that's hilarious. Um, do you? Uh, so we were talking about horror movies. Do you have a favorite horror villain? A horror villain would a Venom be a horror villain or? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite guy, only because that movie came out on my birthday, October fifth. Oh wow, so nice. he became my favorite, and then I mean, I think he's unstoppable. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think so. If you get, if I can go into anybody, any, everybody, there's so many people around us where I can just get into and just have fun with, right? Can you imagine just, Tyrone in the symbiote suit? Like he'd be unstoppable. Right? <laughs> uh, he's already in shape for it, and him being freaking Venom, that'd be unstoppable. That'd be dope. I think so. All right, are you ready for a, a little game here? Let's do it. All right, we're going to play Whore Icon versus a Power Lifter. Okay. All right, so have you seen the movie Scream? Scream. Yeah, uh, yeah I've seen Scream. Okay, so you know the killer, his name's Ghostface. Yeah, with the, the mask. So, yeah, with the mask. Got gotcha. you. All right, so if you're going up against him, what do you think your chances are of survival, and how would you beat him? Before we do that, let me set up the scene for you. Okay, I forgot. That's what I forgot to do was write the scenes, but okay. I have them all in my head. Okay. So the scene is this, all right? You're 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 home alone at night. You know, you're you're doing your thing. You're just you know you 
kind of winding down for the night, maybe having like a snack or something, about ready to watch some TV, you know, just kind of chilling, you know. So uh, you get a, you get a, you get a, you get a phone call, unknown number, you know, you answer it just because you're curious as to what this is. Gotcha. You get the number. You you answer the call. Um, someone asks uh, if this is you know you. Of course, they get into questions of uh, kind of they start they ease into it. They go, "What's your favorite scary movie?" You know, they start asking a bunch of horror questions and stuff like that. Okay. Then it gets a little bit more weird. Okay. At that point, you get um, the killer asking you, "Well, why aren't you in this room instead of this room? I usually see you in this room at this time." That's when full blown, you know, someone's watching you. Yeah, I'm creeped out at that point. At that point, you're creeped out, right? So at that point, when you have the phone in your hand and someone says that they're pretty much outside there watching you, what do you do to uh, either escape this or do you take this guy on head on? I'm taking this guy head on. Head on? Head on. Head on. Yeah. So you're a pretty strong dude. Yeah, we're going head on. For one. Yeah. Uh, and usually uh, with, with a, a killer like Ghostface, he is just a normal man. So your chances of that is, is definitely in your favor, for one. Would you full on just fight him, or are you grabbing a weapon for protection as well? Well, I know he carries a knife, right? Yeah. Yeah, he carries a knife, so we're going to have an even playing field. There you go. Well, technically, in those type of situations, there's no even playing field. So if I can grab a weapon, I will. Yeah. But if, if not, then I'm taking them on head on. Head on. Head on. I'm gonna take. Head on. What do you think your chances would be with him? I have a really good chance against that. According to the movie, I I know I do. Yeah. yeah I'm not gonna play like the movie. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm gonna. This is real life. This is real life. This is real life. And you get you get stronger when yeah. you're in in a life death situation. Especially with that adrenaline hitting your you. Your adrenaline is going. I'm whipping his butt. There you go. It's an easy victory. How I'm gonna do it? I don't know, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> In the fight versus Ghostface versus um, Tyrone, I'm going for Tyrone. Yes. I think so, too. Yeah. All right, our, our next one is uh, Michael Myers from Halloween. That's a strong dude. <laughs> Set the scene. Set the scene. So here we go. Set the scene, please. So I can see if Halloween right night, yeah. 2019. Michael Myers just escapes Smith's Grove Sanitarium. Okay. At this, po at this point, let's make it like it's in California, though, because we're not in Illinois. Um, he's escaped, he's on the run, and he's coming for anyone who gets in his way. Of course, you're home alone again. You know, it's Halloween night, probably about 10 o'clock at night. You're just chilling. Suddenly, you hear a noise in the back room. Okay. It, gets, it, gets, it gets a little creepy, so then, of course, you're going to get up and maybe, maybe look around and kind of think, I don't know what that was. I'm by myself. What is your first reaction to when you hear that noise after that? Knowing when you hear a reaction like that, you investigate. Oh, yeah. You investigate. Yeah. If I'm investigating the windows and stuff and I happen to open the window, the yeah. drape, something like that, and he's sitting right there, and I know exactly who that guy is, I don't uh, – he's somebody you got to shoot. Definitely. You have to. Loomis did it before, and – and that guy got up and walked away. And walked away. Walked away. So, man, I, <laughs> I'm strong, but that guy is super strong. Super strong. Super strong. You know what? Honestly, this one, I'm opening that door and I'm running as fast running. as I can into the darkness and making sure he don't find me at all. And, and you had that kind of in your advantage, too, because Michael Myers is tend to known to walk. Yeah, he's a walker. So, they, therefore, you can haul ass. He may find you, but in the end... Uh, I don't know. This is a hard one. Michael Myers is very unstable. Yeah, I mean, if a bullet can't stop him, I mean, if he catches me and we're toe to toe, I'm gonna fight. I have to. I don't think he's gonna feel what I'm doing. And uh, <laughs> I can tell you this: it's gonna piss him off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You get hit in the face, it's done. You're mad. Yeah, you're mad. So at that point, I'm hitting and running. I'm gonna go with a tie on this one. Yeah, I, I feel like. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, may like book it. Maybe you get to drive away. That, that, that may be the way I to like go. to drive. I got a car. I'm at home. I got yeah. <laughs> I'm driving and I'm yeah. moving to a different state. <laughs> moving to a different state. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm out of here. All right. Out. Next up, we got uh, Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th series. Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th series. Okay. So, all right. So here's the scene 
You're out one night with a group of friends, all right? You happen to f go camping. You guys are setting up your thing. You guys are all set up. You guys are good for the night. Okay. You guys are sitting around the fire. Suddenly you hear branches cracking. And you guys knew that coming over here, you've had rumors of this campground having a past of it that it does, but you guys didn't want to believe it. Okay. So now you hear a bunch of different noises everywhere. You're hearing some stuff creep up on you. At that point, one of your friends goes over to check, but he never returns. Then another one goes to check on him, never returns. At that point, you're down to about two friends. What is your first reaction? <coughs> I got to go find my friends. You got to go find your friends. We stick together. So for this to make it more uh, a human Jason Voorhees, because we know, uh, especially with this guy, over the years, he's been to hell and back. Yeah. He's been an unstoppable beast. Yeah. So we're going to go Friday the 13th Part 2, Jason, where he was at least human. At least human, you know? Okay. okay. So so now that kind of hopefully levels the playing field a little okay. bit. Um, so you go and look for your friends. And that's when... Stopped in your tracks, you see someone with a hockey mask and a machete. What is your first reaction? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> this can get brutal, right? And, and, and I'm with my friends? It's me and my so, friends? At that point, when you decided to go and look for your friends, your two other friends were following because they were scared as well. Right. So now you it's a three against one three situation. Three against one situation. However, I'll, I'll make it a little bit more interesting. Right next to Jason, you'll see a headless corpse and someone stuck to a tree. Like they just got stabbed brutally and they're just stuck on a tree. So if that that's just to intimidate you more. Right. What do you do from there? Like a, nor, with if it's with me and my boys from the gym, oh yeah. We're sticking together. So we're gonna together. make sure we go find exactly where our boys is at. And he's gonna have to have three super strong dudes. <laughs> To deal with, and we're talking. We're not talking. I'm the little bro, really. For the for the moment, we're talking six four two six three, three hundred pounds, maybe two hundred fifty sixty pounds of pair of muscle. So he's gonna have to just deal with all that. Yeah, he is. He's gonna have to. He's, he's gonna have, have that to. machete. We're gonna blind sign him somehow. We're gonna make sure we go find exactly where our friend is at. Definitely, we're gonna definitely. bring him back. So, I think in the case of of Tyrone and his buddies, if one, if both of them hold down his arms, getting the machete away from him, and Tyrone goes full blown spear into him and just starts beating the crap out of him, eventually kills him. I'm gonna go with them, honestly. Yeah. I think one v one, that's tough. Three v one, yeah, it's done. Yeah, it's done. I think we got that one. I think we got it. Even one v one, I'm gonna say, I think you have a chance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The chance is there. It's, it's always a just, chance. You always got a chance. Yeah, yeah you got to evade the, the machete. That's the big That's, that's the, the big goal. <laughs> Get yeah. the machete out of his hand. At that point, it's a fair fight. It's a yeah. fair fight. All right. Next up, we got another great killer, uh, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. I'm, I'm familiar with that guy. All right. Here's the scene. Your car breaks down on the highway of Texas. You and your buddies, of course, are on a, we're on a road trip. Let's just say you're on a road trip going to your next competition. It happens to be in Texas. Oh, I'm getting to the competition. There you go. So, <laughs> so it's no, no, no. Tyrone's head, he's getting there. No matter we what. Get there, we getting there. They're getting there. So your car breaks down, flat tire. Then you see someone just walking up on the street. It's a girl. She looks pretty shaken up, and she looks pretty kind of scared, like she watched all of her friends just die okay at that point you know the human thing to do for everyone i guess even me um take her in obviously right absolutely yes because she she looks all shaken up but she's too shaken up to the point where I mean, i'm taking i'm taking this directly from the first movie she can't stand what happened so she could she shoots herself at that point you guys are all shaken up right because yeah you just saw that never seen that before so, you go and look for help, and you, you approach this house. You knock on the door, no one answers. What do you do from there? 
So we go knock on the door. Nobody answers. Nobody answers, but it's a screen door so you can see inside the house. And it looks like someone's there, but no one's answering. I don't know if I'm going inside of the house. Just for okay. closure. So, let's just say, in this case, one of your buddies goes inside for you. Because he's the tough one that he wants to go inside and he's like, you know, I just want to get out of here. That's their thing. They just want to get out of here, so he just goes in. There's another scene I'm going to take for the movie. He goes and opens the sliding metal door. And at that point, Leatherface appears with a hammer, knocks him unconscious. Then out of nowhere, he pulls out his chainsaw and comes running straight towards you and your boys. What do you do? Run the opposite direction. Run the opposite <laughs> direction. Get away, but it's a trap. See, I'm not doing okay. it. So we're going to run the opposite direction. Make him think that we're running away. Definitely. We're going to attack him from the back. He just Definitely. hit our boy. We got to go get him. Definitely. We, no so, matter what, if one of our friends is involved... We're making sure we're going right back with him. Definitely, definitely. So your boy, of course, he's not dead. He's just knocked unconscious. He hit him to a point where it wouldn't kill him, but it would knock him out. And he'd probably be pretty messed up for a couple days. Right. But um, Leatherface, of course, is, he's running after you. Uh, everyone kind of went their separate ways. But I guess you guys say you guys have a plan where you guys are going to eventually meet up and just kind of ambush. Him. Ambush, exactly. Before that happens, though, you guys, you and him go on a 1v1 fight. What is going to be your motives to try to get away from that chainsaw and stuff? He's very good with that chainsaw. He is good with He's that chainsaw. very good. He knows how to handle it. And that's not a light tool to carry. No. So, to me, automatic, I'm already thinking strong. Strong. To be able to hold that thing for that long and, and know how to work it. My hope, my biggest hope is gonna. I hope it jams. Yeah. I hope it jams up or something. That's nothing. That's something you never really see in the movie. You don't. So we're we're gonna talk real life here, and it, and the chainsaws do jam. They jam. It's a chain. It's a chain. They, it pops just like a uh, the bike will pop. Yep. So, um, how I'm gonna grab anything next to me, the closest thing next to me. If I'm out in the middle of the woods. The only thing I do have is a stick. <laughs> so, oh, in your case, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you something. I'll give you. You get a giant branch, which is pretty heavy and it's got some weight on it, and it's it's effective. So I can't swing directly at him because all he's going to do is chase <laughs> my, my weapon, yeah. <laughs> right? So that'd be Definitely. pointless. So I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna go for the face. That's the best. I'm gonna to swing go. hard as I can for the face. Let me tell you your chances right now. What's my chances, please? With that being said, if you held him up enough to get your boys and um, finish him off, your chances of survival are honestly at a 60% rate. Okay. I'll take that's, it. That's, that's a pretty good. So, and that's the reason a, That's a D plus, and a the D minus. Why, the reason why I'm saying 60% is like you said, this guy has to be somewhat strong in order to wield that chainsaw. Absolutely. Now, if you've seen any of these movies... He not only does he just run with that thing, but like when he gets mad, he's like swinging it in the air. And yeah, stuff like that, and that's what I'm saying. And his strength is crazy. It's undeniably like insane. And this guy is just a man, may I remind you? He's not like, you know, once you kill him, he's done. He's just a man. So I'm going to give you the 60% because I think strategy wise, if you were in that situation, you would find a way to survive until your boys got there. We will. So. We would. Right now, you're with Ghostface. You would kill him. I got him. That's Michael Myers would be a tie. Jason Voorhees, you and your three boys, got done. Him. Easy. Leatherface, you got a sixty percent chance until your boys get there. Then it's done. Done. You want to set up this next one because this next one I'm excited to see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let me Comment on a Leatherface one too. I think if you jump over anything, and you make him have to like actually work. Yeah. And obviously, you said you work out two, three times a day. Right. So you you can probably outrun him for a while. I mean, I, I imagine you have some form of cardio, right. not just muscle. So I think that'll that'll help you out as well. Absolutely. But we got Predator, and I know Tony's excited for this one. How familiar are you with Predator? I know he's ugly as hell. I know that. Ugly as hell. <laughs> so you, you're talking about a uh, an alien from a different planet. Uh, yeah. Um, and the reason why I chose Predator is because not only it. it, it these things are designed to, to kill, to hunt. 
once the, there's one part in every Predator movie where he takes off all of his armor, and a after that, he's just he's going. He's all man, no weapons. It's me and you, one on one fight. We're gonna put that scenario in right now, where you know he's just he's just came into town and he's ready to you know he's he's done his killing spree, but at that point he sees you, and throughout the entire journey. You've been the number one guy he's been trying to go after, but for some reason you've dodged everything he's done. Uh, you've countered all his traps and stuff, and now it's just you versus him. No weapons, it's just you and him in the forest. So here's the scene. You're in the forest by yourself, walking around. It's daytime. Predator comes, jumps down right in front of you, takes off all of his gear, and kind of does that infamous thing where he just kind of spreads his arms and his no, mouth opens no, no. up. He's, He's basically telling you it's it's go time. It's go time. What's your first move? First, don't come down crashing and scare me like that. Because <laughs> that's not cool. Um, and at that point, I already know what it is. It's game time. It's game time. So I'm already mentally ready to say, well, let's go. Um, we might dance a little bit. But, you know, I used to box. There you I go. I boxed for about six, seven years. So I'm going to use every strategy I know from fighting over to being these villains. Yeah. So it's going to be if he, he he doesn't have that much power, right? Once he um, At this point, he's a, he, he's he, taking a lot. He's he's getting weak. Oh yeah. Um and he, you know, he's going to put every last bit he has, ounce right. that he has in it. Yeah, I see. And uh, let me remind you, these guys, these predators are probably either about your size, maybe 8 foot tall. <laughs> so you have that to worry about as well. So let me tell you how this would go down. You said you're gonna go straight for just the fighting. You go fight him, you get a lot of good shots in, no doubt. At that point, Predator, he's on the floor, he's bleeding out his, his green blood. Yeah. But then he looks at you and laughs. At that point, he's got one last trick up his sleeve. And that's his infamous move where at the end of every Alien Predator movie he does, he opens up his thing pushes his button, and sets off a detonation of a bomb. Now, you got time before that bomb explodes. However, you got to remember, the blast radius for this thing is insane. Let's say the blast radius is about 20 to 30 feet. You got about a 30-second time period. What's your next move from that? Are you going to just die like a man knowing that you went down taking on one of the most badass predators in the world in the universe mm -hmm. or are you going to try to book it out of there that 30 seconds and hopefully that you can survive that? I'm doing the last one I'm running I got a story to tell you got a story I got to a story I just beat the one of the baddest in the, universe. in the universe the alien yeah I'm gonna be famous once I beat an alien <laughs> now I'm running his repetition go up in bodybuilding He'll probably be at that point. They'll just move him up to the number one spot. Exactly. There's no doubt in my mind. Exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm going to go with Tyrone on this one because I think with all of his cardio, all of his strength, even at the point where I know he'll be tired at the end, it's it. Yeah, it's that's, easy. that's the easy one. That's, the, that's done. What do you think? That's the easy one for me. I agree. I think so. Especially if it's only 20 or 30 feet. That's not too far. Yeah, not too far. I'm going to get I think I can do that I'm in 30 seconds. There. I'm out of there. <laughs> I think anyone in this room can do that in 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. All right, we got, we got one last one. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, we're going back to one of the universal monsters here. Classic. Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein. Mm. So here's the scene. You show up at Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory. Okay. You hear some weird shit going on in there. You, all of a sudden, all you hear is, it's alive. At that point, all the freaking mob goes and rushes Dr. Frankenstein. They take him away because they think he's crazy. Which leaves you in the castle by yourself. Frankenstein's monster rises up from his table, stands up and looks at you. Now, this is a guy who's gone up against the wolf man and put some damage on him. Yeah. What is your first what is your first reaction when you see Frankenstein? He's pretty tall, isn't he? He's pretty tall. He's what like What you say like 7? Probably 7 feet. 7. That's a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I, if he's if he's standing up, um 
I'm gonna try to be friends with him. I'm gonna be his be friend. friends with them. Like, hey, man, I'm here. I'm on your side. So, so I'm with okay, you on this one. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me, let me fill you in on a little, on a little thing, a little fill secret that happened in the original movie. When he tried to be friends with the little girl, he thought he was playing with her and threw her in the water. The little girl ended up drowning and dying. So, friends with Frankenstein, it could be an advantage, but at the same time, he might not know how to be a friend. That's true. I didn't think about that. Right. So, I'm going to throw this your way as well. Do you know Frankenstein's main weakness? No, I don't. All right. Frankenstein's weakness, and this might come to an advantage if you can find it, is fire. Okay. So... He starts walking towards you real slowly and stuff like that, and he doesn't have a nice look on his face. Okay, so friends are out of the question. So friends are out of the okay. question. You tried you tried that alternative, okay. but he is just too well known to the world. Uh, and he's too he's 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 alive now and he just doesn't he saw his master creator get taken away. He's just pissed now. Okay. You walk he walks towards you. At that point, what's your next move? Uh, run to the kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you go to the kitchen. Um, about the only thing there is, of course, uh, somewhat of a refrigerator which has body parts inside of it. Okay. Because that's how Frankenstein of a weirdo he is. Um, and you got a furnace and a sink. And yeah, that's all you have in there. What's your next move from there? I don't have a stove. Don't have a stove. Nobody that's eats why. in the house. That's why they have the furnace. We're going old. Oh, we're going super old furnace. school. Yeah. Um, I got to grab the a knife. They got knives back in 1930. They had knives. I'm grabbing a knife. Grabbing a knife. Two knives. Two Not knives. Just one. Not no butter knives. I'm grabbing the pointy ones at the end. I'm gonna also put something in your favor too. This is a castle, Doctor Frankenstein's castle. So you got to remember too, there will be torches around there, lighting the way. I'm gonna grab that then. Grab one of those two. So a knife and a torch. There we go. I fig I figured it out. Knife and a torch. I got help on this one. <laughs> right. I didn't. <laughs> You're right. Now that I'm yeah. thinking about it, they do have fire. Okay. Yeah. He's scared of fire, so obviously I need to go for the fire. For the fire. The knife and the fire. All right. So now you're at the final confrontation. You're in the kitchen. You have the fire with you. You have the knife with you. What's your next plan of attack? Since he's afraid of the fire, show no weakness and, and show that I'm not scared anymore because I got your weakness in my hand. And walk towards him. And hopefully he sees that and he runs backwards. If not, throw the fire in his face and run out the house. Torching him and, and give him a slash to the stomach. I think you do a good job in this one. I think so. I think you would live because if you did that exact thing and ran, there's no way he's catching up to you. At that point, I think it would trigger something for the whole castle to burn down if you just threw the fire on the floor. Something would eventually burn up. He walks slow. He's a he's a, he a slow. So, walker. Is he a runner? Is he a, he's a walker, right? He's a walker. He's a walker. He's a jogger. I've actually seen he jogs. Does he jog? But he's un at first, yeah. But then when he starts getting to know what he is and what he can do, he starts to like jog a little bit. But he's not running fast. Okay. Um, Tyrone, I'm gonna give this one to you. I, I'll give it to me too. <laughs> I'm gonna give this one to you because. The, the fact that you have not only the fire, but you have a backup weapon to kind of help you out with this one is all in your favor. Yeah. Uh, so. Sammy, what do you think? I think? so. I agree. I think, especially if you catch him in the beginning and he's uncoordinated. Yeah. I mean, he's like a baby. He doesn't know how to walk yet. Yeah. He's got to learn that. You don't know how to run. You can outrun him. You got the fire. You got the knife. And you have cardio over him. So uh, I think so. The only thing he has is brute strength, but you're also pretty strong. So I mean, his strength and my strength, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't. What's his IQ? Does he? He doesn't have a. He's made right? of a dead body part. So yeah. So at that point, I'm just gonna have to mentally outsmart him and do yeah. things mentally to make, get him all confused. And he's gonna get frustrated. He's not gonna know what to do. Then a fire comes. Boom. And then it's done. Slash to the stomach. I'm out. Done. It's, it's a wrap. So, for a recap, ghost face, done. Easy. Michael Myers, tiebreaker. Mm. Jason Voorhees with you and your boys, done. Yeah, so easy, buddy. Leatherface at first, your chances are at 60%. If you keep 
Of course, with the tactics of uh, outsmarting him. Uh huh. Wait for my boys. And then getting your boys in there, it's done. It's a wrap. Predator. It's going to be quite a fight, and I'd pay to see that match. Yeah. <laughs> but it's done. It's done. Frankenstein, done. Easy. Tyrone, you are definitely going to make number one after fighting all these guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have to go straight to number one from there. Um, before we, we sign off, do you want to plug anyone in, plug your social medias? That way they know where to keep up with you, of what you've been doing, what are, what are you doing, what you're planning on doing. Um, Instagram is uh, tpullfit, that's T-P-U-L-L-F-I-T. -L -L um, I'm not really on Facebook too much, and I don't really post too much, but it's Tyrone Pulley. Um, Twitter, I don't even know my Twitter uh, username because I'm never on that one, so we only use that one. Um, what I plan on doing at this point now is just uh, – of course, we got we got people outside. Yeah, no, it's all good. Music. Yeah, no, it's all good. But um, at this point, go ahead and finish this competition, and then I'm going to actually start coming out with some possible like um, programs for like deadlifting and just building strength. And if you're a beginner and you're trying to learn and doing all that good stuff, and just helping people get whoever wants to become a body a uh, powerlifter and just helping them out. Definitely. So we got a couple of things in the works we're working on. Um, so yeah, make sure to follow uh, Tyrone on his social media. Um, and be on the lookout for his competitions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you do advertise your competitions. I right? do on my Instagram. Yeah, okay. I'll be um, – we'll have some film behind it. So, you know, this, this is kind of the, the start. Definitely. Yeah, so um, this is like the start of, like, the preparation to the competition. Definitely. So definitely. you guys will definitely see it because I'm going to tell you guys and all that stuff. So you guys, oh, yeah. you so guys better see Tyrone it. follow Tyrone on his journey. As he becomes even stronger, yeah. better, yeah. his journey to number one. Yeah. Um, and beating the Predator as well. And beating the Predator. Uh, Tyrone, thank you so much no, for being thank on the you. show. I appreciate and, it. Absolutely. Uh, you're, you're welcome back anytime. We thank can't you. wait to uh, see uh, your competition. Uh, when is it again? September? September 21st. 21st. It'll be a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Las Vegas. Will Las they be, Vegas. Do you know if they'll be live streaming it? They could possibly be. Yeah, they will be. I know I uh, will be on uh, IG Live as okay. well. So if somebody wanted to look it up and just randomly wanted to see it, it uh, time frame, I'm not sure because I'm doing okay. bench press and I'm doing uh, deadlifts. So it can be from 9 to 4.30, but more than likely it'll be like 11.30, 12. All right, Tyrone. Well, thank yeah, you so much again, it. brother. No, thank you, And good man. luck on the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.